Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm Biebs Kelly. Thank you so much for being here with me. Please excuse my hoarse voice. I have been sick for the last week, but I am so eager to get into this project that I have been working on for you guys, which is taking a look at some of the styling concerns that Meghan Markle has but through other celebrities. So in today's video, we're gonna compare and contrast some other celebrities who have similar style concerns to Meghan Markle and see how they manage them versus how Meghan manages them. So one thing I wanna say before we dive into this is that none of these style concerns are flaws. We all have proportions. We all have different types of body shapes and attributes that make us unique, which is beautiful and wonderful. When it comes to clothing though, manufacturers make an outfit or a clothing item with certain measurements in mind or certain proportions in mind that's going to look great on that person, but it might not necessarily suit another. So in my opinion, addressing our style concerns or our physical attributes in this sort of manner is never coming from a body shaming place, it's just coming from facts. If you have long limbs, if you have a long or short torso, if you have short arms like me, you know, whatever it is, it's not coming from a place of body shaming, so I just want to get that out of the way before anybody hops in the comments to say anything of that nature. It's not like that. It's just identifying and being realistic and then seeking out the types of clothes and silhouettes that will work best for your body type because it is literally impossible to make any single garment that will literally be like one garment fits all flatteringly. It just is not a thing. It does not exist. There are no garments out there that will work for every body type. The first style concern we're going to address today is long and thin limbs. Now, oftentimes this is really accentuated or brought to light because of a shorter torso in proportion to long limbs, or if your arms or legs just seem particularly skinny compared to your torso. Now again, this is not a flaw. A lot of women, in fact, will report that they wish their arms were thinner or more toned than they are at that current stage. So it's definitely a good thing or a nice thing for a lot of people in a lot of people's opinion to have thinner arms. But when you look at it in contrast to say like a boxier torso or a very short torso in comparison or something like that, then then sometimes it can just look a little bit off when it comes to proportions and balance, and that translates through into our clothing if we're not careful with our styling. And one last note before we begin, Obviously, the most important thing when it comes to dressing is that you're happy and comfortable. When it comes to people who are like in the limelight or making public appearances or for us in our everyday life on a day where maybe you're going to get photographs taken, there's a special occasion like say a graduation or a wedding, that's the, these are the times where these things really matter because the pictures are going to live on and you know all of us have experienced regret for wearing an outfit or having a, a wardrobe malfunction in a picture that's like going to be shared all over the family unit and friend groups because of an event or whatever. We all have looked at those pictures from time to time and been like, gosh, what was I wearing or what was I thinking? So these types of style tips should help with those types of moments just working out a little bit nicer. But anyway, moving on, let's finally get started. So the first celebrity we're going to compare with Meghan Markle is Angelina Jolie. Both of these ladies have much longer limbs in proportion to their torso and thin limbs. They're both a little bit short-waisted, but Angelina less so, and she does have a more defined waistline than Meghan. She also has a much larger bust than Meghan Markle, which helps to create a little bit more of a waistline effect. And although both of these ladies have relatively broad and well-defined shoulders in their figures, Meg's are much more dominant to her figure and her hips are more narrow, whereas Angelina's hips are almost the same in proportion to her shoulders, just not quite. So let's take a look at how each of these ladies address this long limb proportion to their torso in their styling. And the perfect thing to start with is ginormous pants versus wide leg pants. Wide leg pants done right versus just comically huge pants. Now both of these pairs of pants look a little bit wrinkly. I think Angie's look definitely to be linen, but she is on a casual outing. This is like a paparazzi photo. This was not a formal appearance and I noticed she tends to choose very different fabrics for her official appearances places. She doesn't tend to go for linen when she's doing something professional, unlike Megan. But let's set the wrinkliness aside for a moment, as difficult as that can be. Angelina has this white t-shirt that really draws the eye up and lets that wide leg balance with those longer t-shirt sleeves. 
The simple neckline also allows it to stay really streamlined and sleek where you're not necessarily drawn to any sort of noise or busyness in the neckline or the shirt itself. This silhouette and this outfit for her is all about the shape. She doesn't have anything else creating noise, so to speak, or adding enhancements or embellishments to this outfit. She's able to achieve a more well-defined waist here, and she doesn't have a belt or anything like that which would cause you to rest there on her waistline. The big key here is notice her pants are not too long. They're just right. They're not touching the ground. The rise is perfect for Angie versus with Megan, the rise is far too high and with Megan, they're far too long. Megan's top was also not able to achieve the same type of balance that Angelina's does. With Angelina's outfit, your eye definitely knows what you're looking at. You're looking at the overall silhouette. It's clean, it's sleek, it's fresh, it's very well done. With Megan, you don't know what to look at. You have satin, you have belt, you have wrinkles to all get out, and then you have way too much fabric down at the bottom, just making it look immature and unpolished. Here, Angie's pants are more mid-rise, not as wide leg, but more like a moderate wide leg, like somewhere in between straight and wide leg. This is on purpose, because when you have very skinny limbs, it can look extremely out of proportion if you suddenly have super giant pants or super duper wide leg pants. By having something that's a little bit more moderate in its width or volume in your pants, you're not gonna throw your proportions out of balance in a way that's very noticeable and dramatic, which is good, that's what you want to do. And although in this picture, in this movement, it's hard to tell, her pants are actually hemmed really nicely at a good, perfect length. The mid-rise allows for a great balance for her upper to lower body, especially since it's a monochrome outfit. The waistline is definitely a point of definition, so it's a really strategic placing to have her waistline a bit lower. Her blazer is also not too voluminous, and the shoes match her skin tone, so overall this outfit allows for better balance and proportions. The only thing is that I, it appears that her pants are like maybe falling a little bit, so I wish she would like hike them up just a tad, and then this outfit would be much more perfect. But overall, this creates a great silhouette and balance for her while wearing some volume in the pants without taking things to an extreme where it just looks foolish. Also, you notice there's not some extreme contrast. When Meghan Markle has these really tight halter tops showing off the super skinniness up top paired up with really really big voluminous pants on the bottom, it's just two extremes. You gotta kind of meet a little bit somewhere closer to the middle. It's totally fine and actually a good thing to not do huge volume on top and huge volume on the bottom. You don't want to do that either. But you don't want to do absolutely no volume skin tight top with very dramatically huge pants and bottoms. It's just too far on the scales away from one another. When you bring it a little bit closer to center the way Angelina does, where she has a little bit of volume in her white t-shirt and a moderate amount of volume in her pants, but is still nice and fitted throughout the waistline, it creates that nice balance and hourglass sort of a look. Again, here in this white suit, she has not too much volume in her blazer, there's a little bit of blousing going on with her top, and there's some degree of volume in the bottoms, but nothing is a huge outlier. Whereas with Megan, we had the hugest pants with a skin-tight halter top and bare arms. It was just two extremes that don't go together well in an outfit. Now notice, Angelina Jolie wears a lot of neutrals, but that has everything to do with her skin tone and her coloring. Bright colors can wash her out and really dominate her appearance at times, so this is really perfect for her. It's not the same story for Meghan Markle. Meghan Markle looks fine in color and she should use color more in her wardrobe. Angelina isn't adding weight or interest to the waistlines either. She's not doing pleats or messy belts. Though here she does have the height to wear like a thick belt as a style statement, but she's not typically doing that in her day-to-day -day outfits. She often also opts for midi skirts rather than trousers because these can have just the right amount of volume to really allow her to place the waistband where she needs to and create the silhouette that she wants. These options that have layering and skimming fits that are often not full length sleeves allow her to balance her long limbs without swallowing things up. Meg, on the other hand, adds a lot of weight to the lap area, the crotch area, the waistband. All of these areas in the tummy, she's adding tons of weight 
and fabric and interest and that's going to draw the eye right into those areas in the midsection with her pleats, the drop crotch type situations that she does, the big belts, all those sorts of things are going to just create focus there and you really don't want to do that. Although not all of these pictures of Angelina Jolie are like perfectly coiffed, these are paparazzi shots, most of them, they still aren't drawing attention to her limbs either in the way that Megan does, which in turn draws attention to the contrast and the discrepancy between her proportion of torso to limbs. Here with Angelina Jolie, you can also see that she makes sure that the hemlines are not competing with one another in her outfits, as well as the colors and the textures. With Megan, we often see the coat not matching the length of the skirt or dress very well. And that's a really important thing to keep in mind. If your skirt or your dress is hanging out beneath your coat, you need a good amount of distance of that happening or else it's gonna look really janky and weird. And so Angelina Jolie is clearly careful about that. And again, the tones in this are not competing with one another. We've also seen Angelina Jolie in really straight leg trousers that are just very, very streamlined. They're not skin tight, but they are almost. They're very tapered trousers here but she has a drop waist happening these are more hitting like visually low rise this allows for her long legs to not appear dramatically overly long compared to her torso she also has a three-quarter sleeve going on so she's not creating these sorts of long lanky limbs attached to a boxy torso sort of a look even though she's wearing a jacket that's not defining her waist in any sort of dramatic way it's rather defining a drop waist which is drawing your eye down to that point which creates overall visual balance for the whole silhouette together. The next celebrity we're going to take a look at is Gwyneth Paltrow. The style concern that she shares with Meghan Markle is a lack of a well-defined waist. This is common in the apple and rectangle inclined ladies, short-waisted or short torso type body types. Essentially it just means that you don't have that really clear well-defined taper in at the waist or even if you have a slightly defined waist it's only for like a short distance rather than several inches of a waistline that's kind of drawn in. You maybe only have like a little bit of a waistline showing. So these types of people, like in comparison to Jennifer Lopez or Scarlett Johansson, you would see that like Gwyneth Paltrow, Meghan Markle, they have slightly straighter torsos or less well-defined waists. Again, nothing wrong with this, it's just simply a style concern. To address the rather straight torso, like when styling, if it's if you style wrong, you will look more boxy, more rectangular, and it can add weight to your appearance. It can make you look wider than you really are, which I don't know anybody who would say that that's a great confidence boost. If done really wrong, it can turn you into what looks like a stick figure limbs attached to a big huge rectangle. You really don't want that. But you can create a more flattering silhouette when you style it properly by creating a little bit of an illusion of a waist or simply just flattering the figure with better balance. So let's see how Gwyneth does that in contrast to Megan. We all remember this nightmare zebra dress from Megan or this striped number that was just widening as all get out. Take a look at how Gwyneth Paltrow styled some stripes. This is absolutely fabulous for this body type. It's creating all these diagonal lines, which is creating curves. There's volume up at the top, there's some volume down at the bottom with the train. It's very asymmetrical. And then you're just really drawn into that exposed waist there, and it makes the waistline area seem dramatically defined. It creates a very flattering silhouette. Whereas Megan's stripey travesties clearly widen her at every angle. They add weight to her midsection, they're suffocating her neck. She's even making a pawing motion here. Put your hands down! The difference in balance here between these outfits and where the eye lands is so huge. Using things that create curve to the body or add some curve and softness to the body through asymmetry and diagonal lines, you can really achieve a great level of balance or illusion of a waistline through your clothing. Now I know Gwyneth's dress obviously would not be appropriate for Megan to wear, but she certainly could have chosen things that had more of this sort of a vibe and the draping that's sort of asymmetrical and adding some curve in some way, shape or form. She certainly could have done something like that instead of these types of dresses that were just wrong. Let's take a look at how Gwyneth wears wide leg trousers. 
Now here in this picture she is barefoot so I'm sure that these pants are hemmed for when she's wearing like boots or heels. They're not eating her feet though even though she's barefoot so that's really reassuring. They're clearly hemmed to the proper length. She has a very fitted, simple, clean, sleek waistline to these pants that stay really fitted throughout the upper thigh area and then have a tapered flare to create a wide leg effect down at the bottom. So while still working well with her proportions, she's able to achieve that wide leg trouser effect without throwing her entire look off balance. Meg, on the other hand, chooses all this bulk around the waistline, paired up with a drop crotch and way too much volume throughout the thigh all the way down. There's just room everywhere in the pants rather than having any area of the pants taper in a little bit to show some figure or to bring a little balance or contrast to the wideness. It's just fabric, 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 overwhelming. It abolishes any possibility of achieving balance in the silhouette. Gwen also went for a cropped boxy sweater that hits right at that fitted waistline, which creates the illusion of more definition. This allows your eye to think that her waistline goes in at a greater curve, more hourglassy. Not that that's essential in every outfit, it just happens to be a flattering and feminine vibe. So anyway, this allows the illusion to think that, oh, her waistline continues to go in, we've got this cropped boxy sweater that's hanging over it, which is a very flattering look. Now let's see how Gwyneth Baltrow wears shorts. Her legs are much more toned, muscular, they're tapered nicely, they're much more like defined than Meghan Markle's are, so that's gonna play into this a little bit, but also her shorts are fitted. They're not gaping, they're not huge. The blazer here in this picture is very sleek and fitted, and paired with a bit of volume from that panel in the front of the like skirt or skirt, it really helps to create more hip volume, which balances the blazer's shoulder volume. Plus she did ankle boots here, which keep her legs looking more proportional to her upper body. I really like this outfit for her. I really like this outfit in general. It won't work for everybody, but it looks great on her. Meg, on the other hand, goes for these really voluminous shorts. Again, lots and lots of bulk, lots and lots of, um, of unnecessary volume and, and, and drawing attention to the waistline, rather than strategic volume and she fails to do anything to create a better illusion of a waistline. Gwyneth also doesn't tend to gravitate towards super high-waisted because she is quite rectangular, so it, higher waistlines aren't necessarily going to like do anything for her, so she doesn't gravitate towards them. But even when she does, like in this picture here, they're not huge. They're fitted. They're tailored. It can be done. On the other hand, Megan's going for those super high-waisted, super giant, much less flattering shorts, and she refuses to wear shoes that can help her legs look more balanced. Next up, we have Jennifer Garner. She has a great athletic body type. I think she's also a bit taller than Meghan Markle, but I'm not 100% sure. She appears to have better balance overall with her body, but she does have a slightly longer torso than Meghan's, and she does have broad shoulders like Meghan Markle. So here we're going to take a look at how Jennifer Garner manages those broader shoulders, which can at times really dominate her figure, similarly to Meghan Markle. She actually manages them really well, so even in some pictures it's hard to tell that her shoulders are a broader point of her body. Like here, for example, in jeans, you can notice that in her skinny jeans, her upper body appears much bigger in proportion. However, when she wears more straight leg, relaxed fit jeans, she often looks a lot more balanced. And so that's what she tends to gravitate towards. You'll see her in those more straight, relaxed jeans a lot more often than the skinny jeans. And that's probably why, because it's just much more flattering to her figure. Megan would do well to do the same, not huge pants that you're drowning in, but rather ones that just simply have a little bit of wiggle room in the leg. Also here in these dresses, you can see Jen focuses on creating a vertical focal point. These buttons that come up here just tell your eye exactly what to do, to look up and down. And you're drawn to those buttons because they're in contrast and add texture and they're an embellishment. You're always going to look at those and focus on those. So you completely ignore the shoulders. She also has pockets at the hips, which add a little bit of visual weight or, or balance to those hips. It makes them look a little bit wider to the eye. So that's really helpful as well to balance that figure. Versus Megan in a mini dress here, she's got horizontal embellishments at the top, around the shoulders, and at the bottom. And there's extra room around the shoulders, as well as at the bottom. These horizontal embellishments on Megan are, are just not creating a flattering silhouette. Whereas even if like this was a short sleeve or a long sleeve dress with 
Jennifer Garner, it would still look so greatly balanced with her shoulders. It would be fabulous. By the way, I absolutely love that dress. I want it so bad. It just draws the eye completely away from the shoulders. Jennifer also uses strategic volume like peplums or A-line skirts, but she also uses asymmetry a lot in her dresses and her styling. Asymmetry, diagonal lines, things like that always take away from width. So when she wears these styles, it avoids the appearance of wider shoulders via those asymmetrical lines. It really draws your eye into where those asymmetrical lines are or where they're headed. And that creates this sort of cascading flow, which is so flattering on body types. And it can really help with most problem areas that you have to try something asymmetrical or with diagonal lines. So if you have wide shoulders, things like cutouts and those sorts of asymmetrical tops, things like that are a really great option to try, even if it's asymmetrical in its pattern, like it's color blocked in an asymmetrical way where you have, you know, a diagonal line dividing a lighter color or a darker color up here with a different color in the bottom. Also simply creating a different focal point, the way she did with those buttons, creating a vertical focal point instead, you're really just telling the eyes to go somewhere else entirely. She does that with color sometimes as well. Like here, the, your eyes are gonna go to that pink color in this outfit. They're drawn to the skirt here. So it's just telling the eyes where to go and where to rest. You take in the whole outfit, but then your eye really wants to focus in on that beautiful pink colored skirt. You can get a similar effect through texture or embellishments or pattern, but color is a great way to do it too because a lot of people find that easier to wear something solid than things that have a lot of busy, busy patterns and stuff like that. But as I said, she also uses volume to her advantage. Like in this skirt here, it's got a lot more volume than anywhere else, so it's allowing the overall silhouette to look very, very balanced. It's not my favorite look on her, but in general, it's creating the right type of silhouette. So ladies who have broader shoulders are not banned from strapless dresses, but you do need to have some sort of a focal point to tell the eye where to go or what to do. Something that can really balance broader shoulders is having some sort of peplum or like a wider skirt or a flared skirt, something like that. If you really wanna go for a column or a sheath dress the way Jennifer Garner is wearing here, having this really embellished top here is a great way to tell the eye to focus in on that and it allows for a sort of balancing and minimizing effect when it comes to the shoulders whereas Megan tends to do these strapless dresses that are just all one color it's all gold the whole way down the only other thing there is horrible tan lines or it's all teal everywhere even though there's some texture in the bottom half it's still all one color now all one color is a really great option for Meghan Markle because it's more slimming and more streamlined and things like that. But these strapless dresses really do accentuate the shoulders. They are very heavy on the shoulder. If she had had some sort of embellishment or color change or a peplum to the skirt area, it would have created so much better balance, especially in this teal dress. I think that if it had some sort of a peplum and then a pencil skirt underneath, it would actually would have been like super amazing. If you have broader shoulders, you can also really just direct the eye down to your legs. If you have great legs the way Jennifer Garner does here, wearing a mini skirt or something a little bit shorter, perhaps something with a slit, is another great way to just direct the eye to a different area. Of course, that's not always going to be appropriate, especially for somebody like Meghan Markle, but it is a great styling technique. This dress I absolutely love. The amount of volume in the skirt is not huge and ginormous. It's actually just slightly wider than her shoulders. So even though her shoulders are exposed and you have these tiny little straps, it's creating the best balance with her overall silhouette. It looks spectacular. It gives the illusion that her hips are a little bit wider than they really are, which allows her waist to appear really well defined and create an overall hourglass shape. Compare that to this red dress nightmare where you have weird straps going in weird directions, lots and lots of other cuts and plunges. Like this dress would have actually been quite flattering for Meghan Markle, but no. I think Jennifer looks absolutely stunning in this dress. I love it. Love the draping around the waistline here. And notice also the waistline is a little bit dropped too before the flare of the skirt and one eyes down closer to her hips. So it's just really creating a perfect silhouette. Another thing you can do is wear darker colors on top and lighter colors on bottom. You're again telling the eye where to go. You're always going to go to brighter colors or lighter colors. So here your eyes are going to automatically gravitate towards the skirt, which is going to give the illusion that it's more balanced compared to her shoulders. Again, she doesn't have as broad shoulders in comparison to her hips as Meghan Markle does. So overall, we can see how other celebrities are handling these style concerns or physical attributes 
at least a little bit better than Meghan Markle, if not way better than Meghan Markle. Everybody has a unique combination of things that they're dealing with. So you can't take a one size fits all approach and you can't find one person with one thing and cookie cutter it across all women who have the same type of thing. You have to take each case on its own. But if Meghan were to take some of these bits and pieces from these ladies who have similar concerns, like for example, long and lanky limbs paired up with broad shoulders and that more straight, less well-defined waist, then she could cultivate a style approach that's very, very flattering to her figure and just makes her look even more fabulous. But instead, we have these really rigid, stuffy styles that make her look like she doesn't know what she's doing. Maybe someday we'll see her start taking some cues from some of these ladies who seem to be much better dressed and have similar style concerns. It's really not something impossible to deal with. It just takes being strategic and, of course, honest with oneself, in which narcissism can really get in the way of that. <laughs> Please leave in the comments what you think of today's video, and don't forget to click the like button if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for being here with me. If you would like to subscribe, I would absolutely love to have you, and you won't miss out on the polls that are coming up about this video if you are subscribed they will pop right up for you on your feed. Thank you so much again for being here with me. I hope you have a happy day ahead and I will see you next time. Bye!